So for this problem, what we want to do is they want us to determine all the possible rational zeros. So what we're going to have to do is the rational zero test. And remember, the rational zero test says that all possible rational zeros can be written in the form of p divided by q. All right? So remember, p is all the factors of your constant. Q is all the factors of your leading coefficient. So what I have is plus or minus all the factors of 6, which is going to be 6, 3, well, let's write plus or minus 3. Plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1, all over all the factors of 1, which are just going to be plus or minus 1. All right? So all you had to do for every single question, first of all, is just write out all the possible combinations. So plus or minus, so p over q is going to equal plus or minus. I'm just going to write out all the possible so you guys can see what it looks like, and then we'll simplify. 6 over 1, comma, plus or minus 3 over 1, comma, plus or minus 2 over 1, comma, plus or minus 1 over 1. Well, you guys can see these are all going to be unique. And really, what we have is our zeros are all going to be plus or minus 6, 3, 2, and 1. So that means if we have a rational 0, right, it's going to be one of these. It doesn't guarantee, this test does not guarantee that one of these are a 0. It just says if we have a rational 0, it's going to be one of these. All right. So now, where do we go from here? How do we know which one of these are zeros or not? Well, that's where graphing technology helps us out. If you don't have a graphing um, calculator for your test, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to test them by either synthetic division or the remainder theorem. So what you can do is um, use synthetic division. What I would like to do, I should probably write plus or minus for each one of these. So what you can use is use synthetic division for 1. See if it works. If you get a remainder of 0, that, does that tell you you have a 0? Yes. If you get negative 1, does that tell you you have a 0? No. Well, if you get zero, if, if you get negative one, if you get, yeah, if you plug in negative one and you get a remainder zero, then, you, then is that a remainder as well, or is that a zero as well? Yes, it is. Right. So whenever you use synthetic division for any of these numbers, if you get a zero as a remainder, you know it's a zero. Right. Then the other thing comes into play. You could also use the remainder theorem. Remember, remember the remainder theorem says if x equals a is a zero, then f of a equals 0. So you could also plug each one of these into your function and see if you get 0 when you evaluate for it. If you do, then you proved it's a 0. All right. So I wanted you to do that, but I didn't want you guys just to do those all in the back. What I wanted you to do is use your graphing technology to see what the graph looks like. And the graph to me, right now when I'm trying to look at my zooming window, it looks like it crosses. I don't know what the whole M, um, graph looks like, but it looks like it crosses at 1. I'm not positive, but it looks like it crosses at positive 1. So what I'm going to do, and I tried to zoom out, see if it did any kind of crazy stuff, but nope, 1 looks like it worked. I, it did not cross at positive 6, negative 6, plus 3, negative 3, positive, positive or negative 2, but it looked like it crossed at positive 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that. So how do you verify that? I can use synthetic division. So by using synthetic division, 1, negative 6, 11, negative 6. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 5. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Bring down that. Get a 6. 6 times 1 is 6. Is 1 a 0? Yes, it is. Okay. So then my resulting factor is x squared minus um, 5 plus 6. Are there any two numbers that multiply to give you net negative 6, but then add to give you 3 and 2, uh, or add to give you negative 5 x, right? Because there have a 0. So you could say x minus 3 and x minus 2, right? As well. So then you can write now, so if this is my 0, that means that x minus 1 is my factor. All right, so therefore my zeros are going to be 3, 2, and 1. That's all you got to do.
That's all you guys had to do. Um, now, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen,